Hello. If you want to talk about quality, you have to know what we're talking about. In 93, after I graduated from my uh, polytechnical education as a sales engineer, I decided to, I wanted to know more about certain aspects of marketing and I bought this book by Harvard Business Review. In this, there's a, an article called Competing on the Eight Dimensions of Quality by a David A. Garvin. Thanks a lot, because what Mr. Garvin did is he divided the whole term quality into eight sub aspects. And I've added one because you know that's the way I am. And these aspects are one after another. Performance, features, conformance, durability, reliability, serviceability, perceived quality, aesthetics, and I've added environmental considerations. Let's go through these. The first one, performance, is really the reason why you buy a product. So for instance, if it's paint, you want it to stick to the wall and dry quickly. If it's a car, you want it to be economic in fuel consumption and bring you from A to B. It may also be for certain cars that you want them to be fast. Um, if it's a light bulb, you want it to give a lot of light. Those are performance aspects. Features. Some products you buy specifically for all the features it has. Like for instance, this Swiss Army knife. It's all about the features. Performance, sure you have a knife, it is sharp. Uh, if you talk about performance, about the, the, the screwdriver, sure you, you can find better screwdrivers, but this thing has a lot of things together. Now, for let's say this, this flashlight, the tactical flashlight, a feature would be that you can also focus, zoom in, zoom in and out with this thing. That's another feature. For a car, it may be that you can, for instance, take off the roof, or take off the roof and have a convertible. Features. For instance, if you want to sell any electronic appliance to the United States to be put in the wall socket, it has to be ready for 115 volts AC and I believe 60 Hertz. That is the standard. Also, the plug has to be the same size as the wall socket. Those are aspects of conformance. For this tactical flashlight, the conformance is also ergonomics, that it fits in my hand neatly. If it would be made for a child, it, it would have to be smaller. Things like that. Conformance. The next aspect is durability. That basically means that the product lasts very long. So, if we go back to paint, if you only have to repaint your wall after 10 years, that's a good durability. If you look at, for instance, a, uh, a Second World War Willis Jeep that still runs, then indeed you have a very durable product. Reliability. When push comes to shove, when you need the product, will it actually work or will it just break under your hands? Or actually, even worse, will it even explode? That could happen too. Reliability for a fire extinguisher is a very important aspect. But if you have an emergency backup generator for a hospital and you've chosen biodiesel 
to run it with, you may run into a spot of trouble because what I read is that the bacteria can actually break down the part of the biodiesel that is bio and they turn it into some sort of snot or slime so that when push comes to shove and the generator is turned on it will switch off quite quickly because the filters cannot cope with the slime that these bacteria have produced so biodiesel is not a reliable fuel with perceived quality it's all in the mind of the receiver so for instance if you go back to watches and swiss army knives if you only say that something is swiss quality straight away in the hand of many receivers this is already given a clear pass i mean if it's from switzerland it has to be top notch and in many cases it is but <laughs> it would be very easy to just close your eyes at that point and not look at the other aspects that we're discussing here um, another aspect another example uh, for instance the uh, wrapping around perfume bottles and boxes of chocolate they use a, a type of plastic i believe it's cellophane that gives it a more exclusive uh, image uh, appearance that is all addressed to perceived quality customer has to think Ooh, this just has to be expensive serviceability have you ever tried to exchange a light bulb in a car and were you able to do it or did you have to move the car to the garage for them to do it because some sort of battery was in the way or whatever is underneath the hood of a car that's an aspect of serviceability if you look in the kitchen you may have a, uh, a, a fume hood that has to be serviced every once in a while. Is this something you can do yourself? Or do you need some sort of company to come in to do that? Same thing with defrosting your, uh, your, your freezer or the, the, the part of your, uh, your, your refrigerator. Is that something you can do? And can you do it easily? Or is it quite a hassle? Those are aspects of serviceability. Aesthetics. Some products are specifically bought because they are so, so beautiful. It could be a painting, you know, the fine arts, but it could very well be a Rolls Royce. If you look at a Rolls Royce, it's a, a, to many people it's 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 one of the most beautiful cars there is and you don't want to find a scratch or a wobble in the outside of the car uh, so that is aesthetics but it also applies to to certain products in for instance the industry um, because it is generally assumed that a product that looks really nice and even sounds really nice is also of a better quality uh, well going back to cars Porsche even had engineers to make sure that the sound of the engine was exactly what the customer wanted now environmental consideration for instance if you have a phone and it's through its life but you can take it apart and some of the parts you can reuse and perhaps even turn it into a new phone then that's a much better phone than one that you have to discard and take apart and then really uh, turn it back into raw materials but if you have to do that and turn a, a, a finished product into raw material then at least you would hope you would want that product not to to be some sort of uh, toxic uh, 
waste at the end of it, the whole process. So in my opinion, that's also a, an aspect of quality. So there you have it, eight sub aspects of quality plus the one that I've added. So that next time you are about to judge a product or a service, you know what to look for and be more specific about quality. You have a more meaningful discussion with whoever it is you're talking with or for yourself. Um, if you liked it, please give it a like. If you've not subscribed, please do. And in any case, thanks for watching. Until next time.